Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Irene and today I'll show you how to make beautiful wicker rounded baskets using wash basins, utility buckets and some plastic rattan cord or rope as well as a secret ingredient which I'll show you during the video. Last year, when I made woven planters out of utility buckets, I thought about how to differ their shape a little. Baskets can be pot-bellied, high or low, but you don't get a big variety of shapes if you use utility buckets. To make a planter rounded, first I thought I could place something under the rattan stalks when weaving. Make a circle out of wood for support. But then I'll get a rib where the edge of the wooden base is. This is not what I want. Cut a supporting ring out of insulation foam. It could work, but cotton foam is such a mess. I wish the planter was as rounded as a wash basin, but higher and narrowing to the top. But stop, I can use two basins for that. I went to our local Dollar Tree store and there I found a couple of round basins I needed. To make a planter out of two basins, first I'm going to fasten them to each other. To do this, I'm placing the basins face to face, so to speak, and drilling two holes in the edges of the two basins at once with a thin drill bit, at a distance of about an inch from each other. I'm threading a cable tire through the holes and tightening it, as if I'm sewing two basins together. I've made eight stitches like this along the edge of the basins. They hold really well after this. You can also use pieces of wire to sew the basins to each other. I'm cutting off the cable tie tails with pliers. Next I'll make the markup. First I'm outlining the top edge of the future basket. I've decided to make it at a distance of about an inch from the bottom, so that the opening of the planter is not too small. Here you can cut it higher or lower, depending on which shape you like the best. I'm making the marks and then connecting them into a continuous line. And I've ended up with a circle, the future opening of the planter. After that, I'm marking where I'll attach the stalks. First, I'm making the widest part. Usually, you want to mark the base every inch. I'm making it a little bit bigger than that and marking every inch and a half. I'm marking the entire circumference of one of the basins like this. Next, you want to transfer this markup to the top and to the bottom of the future planter. It's important that you locate the marks at the upper part and at the bottom, right under each other. Well, otherwise the stalks will not be vertical and you don't want that. When using an utility bucket, I had no problems with this. I made the markup using a carpenter square and here is where I've messed up. The basins are convex, so you can't attach a square really close and as a result the markup is quite approximate. I've drawn and erased the markup several times and after that I changed the approach. I'm attaching a piece of rattan to the centers of the bottoms of both basins and on the side I'm placing the rattan piece right near the mark. So I get a vertical guide connecting the mark with the top and the bottom. And I'm marking all the base at the top and at the bottom like this. After everything is ready, I'm drilling the basings according to the markings. I'll use a 6mm drill bit because I have 5mm wide rattan. I've started drilling and here I've got a new surprise. The drill bit didn't work for the basin. I've decided that the drill bit was dull and I've changed it to another one, brand new and sharp. <laughs> the third attempt. This time I'll use a ceramic drill bit. If it doesn't work... Uh -huh. Finally! As we say here, nothing can resist a pinch bar. <laughs> that is a ceramic drill bit. 
I don't know what was the matter with the bits because actually the plastic of the basins is very flimsy. When I drilled utility buckets, I didn't have any problems like this. So I'm making holes in the basins according to the markings, first on the upper part of the future blend. Here you want to have the holes about an inch below the edge, so that the wrong side of the plant is also nice and woven. You can also make them lower than that if you want a deeper, weaker area on the inside. Then I'm turning the workpiece over and drilling the holes in the bottom. Here, as you can see, the markings follow the contour of the bottom, so the beginning of weaving will not be visible on the finished basket. While we were filming this, the weather changed about every 15 minutes, so don't be surprised that I'll be running between three tables while I'm working. Now the rain has started again. Finally, all the holes are ready and I'm going to cut off the top. I didn't do this before, so that it would be easier to drill. With the top cut off, the sides would wiggle a lot. I'm making another hole with a drill bit next to the marked contour and cutting it out with a jigsaw. If you have a Dremel tool, it will be even easier to do. Voila! <laughs> now it really looks like a planter. It's time to take out the rattan. I'll start with the stalks. I'm cutting off a piece of rattan of sufficient length. Usually I make it 7 or 8 yards long. It's a, a little bit hard to work with a longer piece. I'm inserting the tip into the hole in the bottom so that it sticks out on the inside by about an inch. I'm stretching the rattan to the top edge and threading the second tip into the top hole, the one that is located exactly above the bottom one. I'm threading it from the inside out so that the first stalk overlaps the edge of the basin. I'm stretching the first stalk tight and now I'm threading the tip of the rattan into the next upper hole. You get a horizontal stitch on the outside here and the rattan tail is inside the basins again. I'm bringing it out, overlapping it over the edge and lowering it to the bottom and then threading it into the bottom hole, which is located exactly under the top one, from which the tail comes. And we've got the two stalks already. The rattan is inside the basin again. I'm threading it into the adjacent hole in the bottom and bringing the tail out. And this time I've got a horizontal stitch on the inside of the basin. Then, as you've probably guessed, I'm stretching the third stalk tight, threading the tail into the top hole on the inside so that the stalk overlaps the top edge. And then I'm threading the tail into the next hole, making a horizontal stitch. I'm folding the stalk over the edge and stretching it down and threading it into the next hole in the bottom and so on. So you want to thread the entire surface of the basins with stalks like this. The piece of rattan that I've used in the beginning is not enough to do this, but it's very easy to add a new one during the work. I'm cutting the tail inside the basins, leaving a tip of about an inch and then cutting off a new piece and sticking it into the adjacent hole, also leaving an inch tip sticking out on the inside, just like I did in the beginning. If you're weaving with a cord or a rope, you want to make a knot here, but rattan holds well without any. Next, you want to calculate and cut the pieces for the main weave. I have 28 holes around the perimeter, so I'll need 28 pieces. This time I've calculated the length using a special formula that I found on the one of the online groups of On Return Weaving. I'll leave the formula in the description box below. I've calculated that I'll need the length of 2.5 yards and I've added another 16 inches for weaving the upper edge, so in total I've made pieces of 3 yards. I'm turning the base upside down and sticking all the rattan pieces into the same holes through which I've woven the stalks. They go in with a considerable effort and hold really well. You want the tips to stick out on the inside for about an inch, as usual. Finally, I'll start weaving. 
I'm taking one of the tails. I'm threading it under the closest stock to its left, then I'm passing one from above, threading it under the third stock, going over the fourth one and finally under the fifth one. That is, I'm simply threading the tail under and above the stocks for three times. I'm moving to the right clockwise and taking the next tail and threading it just the same way. Since I have moved, the tail is passing under the stock where the first one went above it and vice versa. In general, you want the stocks to be woven over in a checkerboard pattern. I'm also threading it for three times. I'm moving to the right clockwise again and threading the third tail. You keep starting to thread the tails under the nearest left stock and then you'll get the right pattern naturally. I'm threading all the tails like this until I finish the circle. In the end, you want to tighten the weave as in the beginning of the row it is quite loose. The first circle is ready. Then I'm taking a tail and repeating everything. I'm threading each tail through the stalks three times, moving clockwise. For checking yourself, make sure two tails do not lie in the same way. If there are any places where both are over the stock, then you've made a mistake. In fact, I'm just weaving each tail in a spiral motion here. You can weave each tail through only one stock at once or through the three or four as you like. Weaving like this is rather quick. The entire base took just a couple of hours for me. After I've made half of the planter, I've realized that I do not like its shape. I can still see the rib at the junction of the basins, but the most important is, because the weaving had to be stretched tight, the shape turned out to be not rounded, but rather slightly concave. I thought I could put something under the stalks to make a nice convex shape, and then I remembered that somewhere in the barn I have pipe insulation. These are soft foam tubes. I'm cutting the tube in half lengthwise to make it easier to thread under the stalks. You can also use pool noodles for this purpose. I'm slipping one of the halves of the tube under the stalks. This is not so easy to do, it would be better to do this before making the stalks. To make the shape even more rounded, I'm placing the halves of the tube in two rows under the stalks here. And then I finish weaving the base. Here you can clearly see the difference in shape where I've added the foam tubes on the top part and without them on the bottom part. So I'm weaving almost to the top edge, but in order for the basket to look natural, I'm going to add an edge trim. Here is how to make it. I'm taking a tail, skipping two stalks and threading it under the third stalk. Then I'm moving to the left, this time I'm moving counterclockwise. I'm skipping two stalks again and threading the tail under the third one. I'm shifting to the left again and repeat. On the fourth stalk you can see that I have the two tails going out of the same place at once. After threading the tails point down, so you want to choose the one that points up. This will be the tail that hasn't yet made a step. Doing this, you'll end up with a twisted rope along the upper edge of the planter and all the tails will change their direction and will point down. Thank you. 
For the last two tails, you'll see that after making a step, the tail goes out higher than the others. I'm threading it under the twisted rope, which I've got along the edge, in order for all the tails to go out from under the twisted rope. Here is how the finished row looks. For the next row I'm taking a tail, skipping the two stalks to the left of it and threading it under the third stalk. Here I've had to lift the weave to do it. I'm moving counterclockwise, skipping the two stalks and threading the next tail under the third stalk. Then moving counterclockwise and so on. You'll get the second twisted rope just under the first one and all the tails that made a step will be in between these two ropes. Here, starting from the fourth tail, you'll see again that here the two tails go from under the same stock at once. The one which has made a step and the one that hasn't. It's easy to choose the one you need if you remember that all the tails originally pointed down. Here is the one that points down and you want to choose this one, it hasn't yet stepped. The tails that have made a step will point up. At the very end you want to adjust the last two tails and thread them under the rope, so that they all have the same pattern. Here is how it looks now. Now let's finish the trim. I'm threading each tail, skipping the two stalks under the third one again, but this time I've changed the direction of weaving and I'm moving from the left to the right, clockwise, as I did for the main weave. Here it is the very edge, so I'm threading the tails on the inside of the planter. The end is so close! All that is left is to finish the insides. I've had space for only one more row of weaving here and I'm using the main pattern, skipping one stalk and not the two. By the way, for a rounded plant it turned out to be really difficult to weave on the inside, as you can't really see anything, I did this almost by touch. In the end, I'm cutting off the tails and hiding the tips under the weave. I've ended up with about half a yard extra, so the formula for calculating the length of the tails really worked. After I finished the planter, a new idea came to my mind. I can make a base using utility buckets just as with the basings, by putting one on top of the other to make a tall and narrow base. I've bought the buckets in Dollar Tree as well. To begin with, I'm removing the handles and cutting off the handle holders and the spouts with a jigsaw. Then I'm doing exactly the same as I did for the basins. I'm drilling the edges and connecting them with zip ties. I'm marking where the holes for the stocks will be. Here the markup is much easier, the carpenter square works fine, I've just placed it on the bucket and transferred the marks from the side to the bottom and to the top. Then I'm drilling the holes. And finally I'm cutting off the bottom. I've got a vertical base, but here I've also wanted to make it rounded. I've got only one foam tube left, but then my eye fell on pieces of pool noodles. They used to be swords at one of my son's parties, but now kids no longer play with them, so I've decided to use them. I'm cutting the pieces in half and hot gluing them onto the buckets. I'm 
I've also used the last foam tube piece which I had and I'm making as many as four foam circles going around the buckets for making a nice and rounded shape. Since the pool noodles are bright blue, I've decided to spray paint them black, so that nothing really shows through the weaving. And finally, I'm weaving the planter. Here everything is just the same as with the first one, so I will not dwell in detail. I'm making the stalks, I'm weaving the main part, And finally, I'm finishing weaving with a trim. This is how the finished planters look, but to make them even better, I'll make handles for them. I haven't found any information about how to make them actually, so I've made them how I imagined the process. I've threaded the rattan tail through the main weave into places to make a kind of a handle base. Then I've added a couple of loops to make the handle thick enough. And then I've wrapped the base with more return loops. Near the edges I've wrapped the handles tightly with several more loops of return and finally fixed the tips with a soldering iron. Well, and the most important thing, here is why I ever started this project. I'm putting plants in the baskets. I've decided to add a plain pot into the basins planter as the base is still flimsy. I'm afraid it wouldn't stand the weight of soil when moving around. As for the vertical basket, I've used it right as it is, having previously drilled more drainage holes on the bottom. To be honest, I'm not entirely satisfied with the shape of the basins planters. I haven't thought of attaching pool noodles here to make it rounded. But on the other hand, I've already decided that I'll make several low white baskets from separate and not spliced basins. Tulips, daffodils and snowdrops will look great in such baskets in spring. Just imagine how cute this will be. And when leaves begin yellowing, I'll just put them away. You can experiment endlessly with such bases, using containers of different sizes, cutting off the top in different places and adding more or less pool noodles. Well, I hope you liked today's project. Actually, I'm going to use these baskets for decorating the patio in front of our house. We're going to give this space a huge makeover, so if you're interested, stay tuned. Thanks for being here and we'll see you in my next video. Bye!